So please welcome our first speaker, Owen Driscoll, National Manager, Industry and Government Relations, NTI. Thanks, Matty. Afternoon, everybody. I'm just going to take you through very quickly um, some, some work we've done. I'll preempt that by a, a statement um, in relation to our accident research. Continuous change in the road transport sector throughout Australia necessitates ongoing research to ensure that road safety measures maintain pace with the new generation of technology and the ever-changing behaviour and attitude of road users. Uh, once again, after the usual two-year interval, the research centre revisits the behaviour of the commercial predominantly hire and award uh, road fleet with an evaluation of major truck accidents. This is the seventh report released since 2002. Continues the tradition of researching the circumstances involving major truck crash incidents in Australia. Uh, we believe that Natasi National Truck Accident Research Centre's commitment to accident research provides an understanding of the root causes of road crashes that may well influence the implementation of countermeasures that may subtly drive behavioural change. Do you want to do a slide? Do you get a slide thing here? Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, it's early 2017. Review it takes a fresh look at crash incidents reported to NTI in 2015. During that year, industry and government agencies continued the evolution of microeconomic reform, seeking further uniformity and consistency with road transport law and road regulation. Whilst fatalities involving heavy vehicles continue to decline, we are reminded that there is no room for complacency as the reliance on road freight movements remain pivotal to Australia's economic stability and growth. The Natasi Biennial Report into Heavy Vehicle Crashes is an impartial and valuable resource for road safety reviewers. The report represents both a very large survey and a safety snapshot of the Australian road freight industry. This snapshot is indicative of the industry's recent performance and general behaviour. The report is always attempts to be unique, current, unbiased and hopefully not open to selective misreporting. Uh, this afternoon I've got 15 minutes to give you an overview of the latest project which in, eff in effect we've devoted the last three or four months to so this is going to be quick so hang on. We haven't released the report as yet. It will happen, I think, in the next month or so. Uh, OK. So here we go. Here's a quick look at... Wrong one. All right. So what we actually do is we look at our... Um, what we call our greatest hits. The accident's over $50,000 for any period of time under a, um, a two-year interval. Um, I leave it at 50 because we started 50 many, many years ago and it gives me an opportunity to do a mirror image comparison, although 50 in today's money in truck crashes represents not a lot of damage. Having said that, this particular study looked at 600 odd incidents over $50,000. It cost us $85 million. Average loss was $140,000. The increase had gone up marginally as far as our average cost was concerned. And during that time, our fleet numbers had increased to 187,000 items. Uh, this is a bit of very much a snapshot of, of what the study's all about. Um, uh, to give you, when we look at it, you've, you've read them before, I, I look at where they've happened and, and why they've happened and when and where, et cetera, et cetera. So one in every 2.2 of our major hits happened on Highway 1, and that's where we want the regulators to focus their energy and not waste their time in the outback. Worst months were November, uh, May, August, October. Early in the week, as usual, we're getting 52% of our major losses um, in the first part of the week. And that has been consistent throughout the 15-odd years of the studies. 
Um, this time we saw a deterioration in the result in New South Wales and Victoria. Seems as the roads get better, the behaviour gets worse for some reason. It just doesn't work, does it? Uh, West Australia, who in the previous report was very ordinary, and the West Australians were a little bit precious about that, weren't they, Grant? Um, actually, um, in this study on the, in the 15 clubs, uh, the West Australian re uh, result was very, very good and improved a lot. The Queensland result actually improved um, quite marketably too, and I think that was a fall off in the urgency of um, uh, the mine supply task, quite possibly, very, very similar. Uh, middle of the day, we're getting most of our hits, and that's really because that's the major population of, of our freight vehicles are on the road at that time, probably usually between about 10 and 3. Uh, the best highway this time was the Hume, uh, the Victorian side of the Hume, the worst, believe it or not, specific highway. And New South Wales RMS will have a nightmare over that after all the money they've just spent on it, and it's nearly finished, but that's exactly what our, our data is telling us. Uh, and the best and the safest combination on numbers we've got, um, where you've got a, a large proportion of the freight task involved is B-doubles. 43% uh, of the freight task and 28% of the major losses. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Single vehicle accidents were 66% of the large claims that we looked at. Uh, with inappropriate speed being the major cause of those single vehicle accidents. Um, overall, since I started doing this stuff in 2002 uh, with Australian Transport Safety Bureau in Canberra, uh, we now have 46% less heavy vehicle major accidents. So make sure everybody knows about that. Rather than getting trashed by RSRT and various tribunals, it's interesting to realise we have a lot fewer heavy vehicle accidents these days than we used to. Things are getting better. And of course that's why we've had, whilst we've had a 40% growth in the freight task, so it's an excellent result as far as the road transport community is concerned and people that uh, look at safety measures and risk management within the road transport community. Again, outbound journeys are our major problem. This nonsense about accidents are happening on the, on the backward leg. Um, we haven't seen in our data at all. Our incidents are mainly happening on the outbound leg early in the week. It's very much about fitness for duty and driver management and how the driver turns up for work on Sunday or Monday or when that, when that work week starts. Uh, mechanical failure, I mean there's been a lot of agencies concentrating on the uh, mechanical um, nature of the fleet. We don't believe it's an issue, we in fact think it's inconsequential if we look at the major hits as far as mechanical uh, failure is concerned. And of that 3.5%, the greater majority of our losses happen in that, in that area with tyre failure. And I only put tyre failure in there at 52% I think because I've got nowhere else to put it, so I put that in mechanical failure. So if you actually take that out there, it's neither here nor there. And we've had a lot of emphasis on, on mechanical, and I think if we've got mechanical issues, I think the concentration needs to be in the local fleet, in urban, metropolitan, heavily populated areas. But I'll leave that for others to work that out. Uh, major concern this time is we had a lot of, uh, a lot of deaths. Um, I think there was 56 or 58 deaths on police reports and coroner's uh, reports that I looked at in the studies. Um, I think we lost two truck drivers, uh, the rest were third party drivers, um, majority of them in, in small cars and light commercials. Of those, the greater majority of accidents uh, was the fault of the, uh, the driver of the lighter vehicle. We need to concentrate our road safety resources to fixing uh, the problem with car drivers rather than truck drivers. Uh, fatigue. Fatigue is about 12%. I remember when we started doing this in 7, 8, 9 when we had fatigue reform um, and we really gave driving hours a dust up during that time and we, we, we did see a, a, an improvement because it's very top of mind for, for people as far as driving hours and rest breaks and that sort of stuff. Uh, I think in the 7 or the 9 report um, our fatigue figures were 20%. They immediately improved to about 10% and they've floated back to 11 and 12. And in this report, when you read it, you'll see that I say, is this as good as we're going to get? Um, uh, I just don't know how much more work we can do on fatigue. There's more money being thrown at fatigue research. I argue the value of that, but, but anyway. Um, in this fatigue um, figure, 
Um, the greater majority of our fatigue losses happen when drivers are in extended driving hours programs. Maybe we need to put a little bit more integrity in the training of people in uh, extended hours programs. Just a comment. Livestock. 10% of the, of the big hits for livestock, that's overrepresented as far as I'm concerned. The freight task is 4%. Very hard from a livestock point of view to establish what your freight task is because quite a high proportion of your, um, your running is unladen. When I did an independent livestock report, I found that the greater majority of incidents, I guess it's common sense, happen when, you, when you're loaded. Um, and during the course of the year when I get a little bit more time and I speak at various other livestock conferences and, and bulk conferences, I'll do a little bit more work and, and give you some numbers on, on the grain fleet and what their behaviour is. Don't really have a problem with the grain fleet side of it. Um, uh, the other interesting thing here which we need to concentrate on and um, our government agencies and regulators need to concentrate on is this ancillary uh, proportion of the fleet which really run under the guard of, of regulators. Concentration is on hire and award drivers and we, uh, operators and we trash them all the time. Um, a big, big majority of, not a big majority, a big proportion of accidents in the livestock area happen with uh, farmers and graziers who think it's a bright idea to go and buy a, a truck and trailer these days and undercut the proper operators. If they represented 27% of the hits, I'd like to know what, what proportion of the freight they carry. That'd be really interesting. But see, we, we tend to graze over, graze inappropriate pun, we, we tend to look over this ancillary part of the fleet and we don't concentrate on it. And we concentrate on you guys, or people concentrate on you guys and the, the line haul fleet because it's very low hanging fruit. You're very easy to get at. So we've got a problem with the, this ancillary um, sector of the industry. We've also got a problem with the town fleet that are very hard to get to. There it is, as I said. Uh, we saw improvement in Queensland and South Australia. Victoria and New South Wales were not as good. West Australia was improved. And Tasmania and Northern Territory were neither here nor there. Driver age, quickly, for the first time in all the studies I've done, the driver age average has actually come down a little bit. As you can see, it's been proportionally growing over you know, the list of all the studies. I can only attribute that to the fact that you can only get so old before you get young again, aren't you? I mean, they, they just can't get any older because guys are getting out of the business, and that's effectively what's happening. Um, I'm very much into um, if, we're, if our average drive, uh, average age of our drivers is this, 40% over 55, rather than spend a lot of money and resources on, on school kids, if this is the majority of our driver base now, we've got to retrain them. And that's it. That gives you a bit of a snapshot. I'll be, I'll be sitting on this panel. Thank you, uh, Matt and... Uh, uh, I'm happy to take any questions from you later on, but the report itself will come out, I think, in the next month or so, and you'll be able to go and find it on uh, NTI's website. Thank you.